Mitosis and meiosis are two of the most important biological processes students need to understand. They're similar in name and process, which makes it hard to tell them apart. But never fear, Visible Body's got you covered. We're going to use 3D resources in VB Suite to go over some of the key differences. Let's start by looking at mitosis. Mitosis is how somatic cells make more of themselves. Somatic cells are the non-reproductive cells you'll find in the bodies of animals or the tissues of plants. If you look at our 3D cell model, then go over to the mitosis simulation, you can see that the cells at the beginning and end of the process look just like this cell. That brings us to another important characteristic of mitosis. Watch the mitosis simulation and you'll observe that the result of mitosis is two genetically identical daughter cells. The parent cell replicates its genetic material. A replicated chromosome has two sister chromatids joined by a centromere. Then a mitotic spindle forms. Spindle fibers attach to the chromosomes. Line them up at the center of the cell, then pull a copy of each chromosome to each end of the cell. Lastly, the spindle breaks down and the cell undergoes cytokinesis, fully splitting into two new cells. You'll also notice that each of the daughter cells has the same number of chromosomes as the parent cell, eight total. Remember, the parent cell's chromosomes replicate at the beginning of mitosis. But did you catch that half of the chromosomes in this model are red and half are blue? That's on purpose. Highlight them to see that they're labeled maternal and paternal. That's because the cell in this simulation is diploid, containing two full sets of chromosomes one from the organism's mother, and one from its father. So at the end of mitosis here, our two daughter cells each have eight chromosomes total, four red and four blue. Therefore, we typically say that mitosis produces two genetically identical diploid daughter cells. We didn't cram them all into this model, but humans have 46 chromosomes total. We think of them as being organized into 23 pairs. One chromosome in each pair comes from the mother, and one comes from the father. Keep all this in mind as we look at meiosis. Meiosis is how gametes, or sex cells, are formed. In humans, these are sperm and egg cells. You can use the male sex cells and female sex cells animations in VB Suite to learn more about these specific gametes and the important role meiosis plays in their production. The first big difference you'll notice before even opening up either of our meiosis models is that meiosis happens in two phases. That is, it actually involves two divisions, whereas mitosis only involves one. So let's open up the meiosis one model. Meiosis one starts with the replication of chromosomes, just like mitosis. But right away, you'll notice some key differences. The parent cell in this simulation still starts with eight chromosomes, four red and four blue but the replicated red and blue chromosomes pair up. Homologous chromosomes, that is, maternal and paternal chromosomes that contain genes controlling the same inherited traits, pair up with one another. These chromosome clusters are called tetrads. Now once we've got the tetrads, something even crazier happens. Pieces of homologous chromosomes swap equivalent segments of DNA. This is called crossing over or recombination. The chromosomes in the tetrads are no longer uniformly red or blue. Here's another way genetic variation is introduced during meiosis. Spindle fibers arrange the tetrads at the center of the cell independently during meiosis one. That means that it's random which chromosomes from each homologous pair will end up on each side when the tetrads are pulled apart. So if we look at the top tetrad there, we can get that mostly blue pair of sister chromatids getting pulled to the left or to the right, and vice versa for the mostly red pair. That brings us to meiosis two, where each of the product cells of meiosis one will divide. But meiosis two doesn't start with replication. Instead, the spindle fibers form and pull apart the sister chromatids as the cell divides. This leaves each daughter cell with only one set of chromosomes, in this model, four chromosomes total. These daughter cells are therefore called haploid cells. 
and you'll notice that the chromosomes in each one look different. Meiosis produces gametes that are genetically distinct from both the original parent cell and from each other. We can watch the fertilization animation here to see that during sexual reproduction, a sperm cell fertilizes an egg, joining two gametes together. That's how each organism ends up with one set of chromosomes from each parent. But the genetic shuffling that takes place during meiosis ensures that offspring are genetically unique from each other and from their parents. Cool, right? And that wraps up our comparison. That was a lot of info we just threw at you, so we've organized it into a handy chart. Feel free to pause the video and take a screenshot here. To check out mitosis and meiosis in VBSuite for yourself, visit visiblebody.com slash VBSuite.